This past first week of April, me, my dad, and my brother went on a multi-park road trip throughout the southern states of the East Coast. This included Busch Gardens Williamsburg, Carowinds, Six Flags Over Georgia, and Fun Spot Atlanta to ride Area Force One. This week also falls on spring break for most of the states where the parks are located, so some challenges with crowds were presented to us. In this video, I'm going to tell the story of how the trip went, what exactly happened on the trip, wh where we went, and my new thoughts on certain coasters we rode. Our itinerary was originally planned like this, flying to Norfolk Airport on Tuesday night, stay the night at a hotel in the area, spend Wednesday at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, stay overnight at the same hotel, go to Busch Gardens again on Thursday morning, drive to Carowinds in the afternoon, stay the night at a hotel near Carowinds, go to Carowinds all of Friday, drive to Atlanta on Saturday morning, spend the rest of the afternoon at Six Flags Over Georgia, stay the night near Atlanta, and then go on Sunday to ride Air Force One. We landed in Norfolk, Virginia on Tuesday night as planned. We stayed the night at a nearby hotel, and then went to Busch Gardens the next day. Wednesday at Busch Gardens was such a nice day, where temperatures were in the 80s, and it was sunny all day. This was my third time at BGW, so all the rides I rode were all the same. Unfortunately, I did visit only a few weeks before Dark Coaster was supposed to open. I rode Pantheon only four times due to the crowds, the fact that they were running only one train that day, and the fact that my brother needed to catch up on all the other credits in the park, since this was his first time visiting. And yes, Pantheon was running only one train, and was still letting people through the quick queue, which goes through the exit. Amazing capacity for sure. Pantheon was ultra elite as always, still staying in the same spot in my rankings. And to find out where it is in my rankings, please watch my top 25 coasters video. For Bolton and Apollo's Chariot were great as always. While we were at the park, we saw in the weather forecast for Charlotte that there was supposed to be a complete washout all day on Friday, the day we were planning on going to Carowinds. At that point, we were already satisfied with our day at BGW, so we decided that we would not need the next morning in the same park, and that instead, we would be driving to Carowinds early in the morning, and then going there on Thursday instead. But the problem was that the park would be closing at 6pm that day, so we decided we would need to wake up at 5am in the morning, leave the hotel room, and drive straight to Carowinds non-stop. Carowinds was 5 hours away from BGW, so we would get there at 12, and only have until 6 to do all the rides. The park was so busy that day, that the line of cars to get into the park started at the highway exit before the park. Yikes. After an hour, we finally got past the parking booths, and found a parking spot all the way in the back. This is when we found out it was supposed to thunderstorm sometime in the afternoon, and with the insane amount of crowds, minimal time at the park, and threats of severe weather, I started to get very worried, making it one of the most stressful experiences I've had in an amusement park. When we saw all the crowds, we were like, screw it, let's just get the fast lane. So we ended up getting fast lane, and went straight to Fury 325. It had a 3 hour plus wait time extending all the way past the entrance, but with fast lane, we got on it in around 10 minutes, which is extremely worth it if you ask me. When I got off, I found it a bit overrated as I expected, but it was still more graceful, and in my opinion, it doesn't hold up with other elite coasters in my top 10. And spoiler alert, another coaster at the park. After two rides on Fury, we then went to ride Copperhead Strike, and waited about 15 minutes in the fast lane. We got to ride it in the front row. Everything I'm about to say next is about to trigger a lot of people, so brace yourselves. I think Copperhead Strike is the best coaster at Carowinds, and I personally rank it above Fury 325. No joke. This is one of the most, if not the most, underrated coaster in the coaster community. This coaster is never talked about, and when I do hear it being talked about, the only thing I hear about is how the launchers are weak. And yes, I do agree with that, but nobody says anything about the wicked laterals and positive Gs, and violent ejector airtime this coaster has to offer. I will be making a separate video as to why Copperhead Strike is criminally underrated, and why it is the best coaster at Carowinds. We then hit up Intimidator, and then we went to try to ride Afterburn. But while we were in the fast lane to get on, all the rides in the park shut down for thunder in the area. There was then a passing thunderstorm for about an hour, and then after it passed, we finally rode Afterburn. Before we left, we made sure to get one more ride on Fury and Copperhead, and then the park closed at 6pm. When we woke up the next day, we saw it was pouring rain outside. But I also saw that the park was open that morning. And Carowinds weather policy is that if it's pouring rain but no thunder in the area, then they could keep the coasters open. I ended up going again to the park by myself that day, and it was pouring rain almost the entire day. And the four rain rides I got on Fury hurt so bad that I had to cover my face the whole time with my raincoat hoodie. Fury was only open for the first two hours, but then closed for winds for the rest of the day. 
but Copperhead Strike was open and had an empty station the entire time, so I ended up marathoning it and got a total of 32 rides, which is the most rides I've gotten on the same coaster in one day. The park ended up closing early at 4pm due to low attendance. Our plan the next day was to wake up in the morning and drive all the way to Atlanta. We ended up following up with that plan, and drove all the way towards the Atlanta area. We drove another 4 hours down south, while it was pouring rain, and then came the most disappointing part of the trip. When we got to Funspot Atlanta to ride Air Force One, since that was our plan for the day, it was pouring rain, and when I spoke to the park manager, it was found out that the park was closed for the day due to weather. In my most recent vlog, I expressed my disappointment about the situation. After that big hit to my day, we went to our hotel and stayed the night right next to Salimland, Georgia. Our plan for Sunday, the next day, was to hit up our major bucket list coasters at Salimland and spend around 2 hours at the park, and then drive straight to Fun Spot and spend the rest of the day there until we had to leave at 6pm to catch our flight back. At Salimland, we rode Daredevil Dive, Goliath, Twisted Cyclone, and Riddler Mindbender only once. Daredevil Dive was a disappointing Eurofighter with forceless turns, inversions, absolutely no airtime or any forces on the drop whatsoever. Honestly, it was kind of a dud to start the day. We then rode Goliath, and it was also quite disappointed by that. It just didn't stand out from other mediocre BNM hypers the way other enthusiasts were saying it does. But I already came into Twisted Cyclone with low expectations, and it is indeed the weakest RMC of Riddin, but the Twisted Drop delivers great airtime and laterals simultaneously and the sustained flejecta airtime on the wave turn also surprised me. Riddler Mindbender was a dud, except for the two back-to-back -back loops which were decently forceful. We then spent the rest of the day at Fun Spot riding Air Force One, and it definitely lived up to my expectations. Watch more of my takes on the ride in my vlog I posted. I then got 12 rides on it, we left the 6 to go fly back. Overall, I call this trip a success. Although Saturday was a setback, I still got in every experience I wanted to do, some of it multiple times. I always wanted to hit up the larger parks down south and get in the experiences there, and on this trip, I finally got to do it. Unfortunately, I did not get to record any off-ride footage of parks like Carowinds and Six Flags Over Georgia. Both days at Carowinds, there were problems with crowds and weather, so it was not convenient and simply wasted time to record footage. Same thing as Six Flags Over Georgia, where I only had 2 hours total at the park. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you all next time.